Hi everyone, hope you're well. So I'm back with a cup of tea and my notebook again on what is a beautiful sunny winter's day. I can't believe the difference in the weather from yesterday when I was filming and the light was going in and out because of the wind and the cloud and it is gorgeous today. Anyway, I digress. So a few of you I know are saving at the moment to purchase your own property and a couple of you got in touch with me and said, would I share the details of my mortgage, kind of what was the product I choose and then talk through the reasons kind of why I chose that, what kind of, you know, why I decided on the term I did, et cetera, et cetera. So happy to oblige and share that with you today. Now, I know that this video is not necessarily going to add value to all of you. I know lots of you already have houses and mortgages and all the rest of it and probably very very well versed in this. So uh, feel free to skip this one and come back on another video. However, if you just fancy being nosy, then of course you are quite welcome to stick around as well. Also, before we jump in, it should go without saying, but this video does not constitute advice. I am not a qualified or professional mortgage or financial advisor. I'm merely sharing the decisions I made based on my circumstances. Your circumstances are likely to be different and therefore you may need to make different decisions. And of course you should see professional advice before taking out any loan, mortgage, etc. Oh, phew, and now I've got that out of the way. Um, I thought what I'd do is share with you the main features of my mortgage product and then kind of talk through the reasons why I went with that product and why kind of some of those features were important to me. Now, I'm not going to talk through specific monetary numbers. Uh, this will make sense as we go on, just because I don't think it's particularly helpful. So I live in Yorkshire in the UK, which is classed as the North of England. And generally speaking, housing in the North of England is cheaper than many parts of the South. So it kind of doesn't really help to compare. Not only that, the salaries in the North often are lower than the salaries in the South. So I just felt that it wasn't particularly beneficial or valuable to kind of talk specific numbers, but hopefully that will make sense as we go through the video. Okay, so let's jump in. So here are the details of my mortgage as of the day that I took it out. So the loan to value is 79.5% with an interest rate of 2.24% and that is fixed for five years. The length of the term was 29 years. I can overpay by 10% of the original sum each year without incurring an early repayment charge. Any overpayment goes into an overpayment reserve and the mortgage product fee was £999. Starting with the LTV or the loan to value, I quickly realized with the provider that I'd chosen that the interest rates changed in increments of 5%. For example, you'd have one interest rate at 70%, then at 75, then at 80, 85, and so on. But the rate between say 70% all the way up to 74.9% was the same. So I realized that maybe by just putting say an extra thousand pounds in my deposit, I could push myself into that lower increment, but benefit from a lower interest rate. So that's exactly what I did. As you can see, I have a loan to value of 79.5%, but I'm actually benefiting in essence from the 75% um, loan to value interest rate. I did consider trying to go for the next increment down, which I think would have given me an interest rate of about 2%, if I'm remembering rightly. Um, but it, And I could have just done it, but it would have almost wiped out my bank accounts completely. And I just didn't feel comfortable with that. I really do like having an emergency fund even if it's not huge. Uh, I really like the kind of feeling of security that that gives me that, you know, even if something bad happens, that I'll be okay. So I just kind of felt that because I've got the option to overpay, which I'll come back to later, um, I just felt that sticking at the 79.5% LTV with an interest rate of 2.24% was the right choice for me at the time. I decided on a fix of five years because I wanted the security of knowing exactly how much I would pay for a good while, especially as this is my first mortgage. Also, having monitored the markets, I was not confident that interest rates would stay as low as they have been for, well, certainly not forever. And possibly I think there might be some movement in the coming years. Uh, and given the high rates of inflation at the moment, I'm really, really pleased with that decision. I did consider a 10 year fix. As I say, I was not confident that interest rates would stay low long term. Um, but 10 years is a really, really long time. And even though the rates were really good at 10 years, so I was sorely tempted, 
I just feel like your life can change such a lot in 10 years. Um, perhaps if I had children and I wanted them to go to a specific school and I was confident that the house was the right house for me long term, then I might have made a different decision. But for me, when I think about my life 10 years ago, it's so different to the life that I lead now. So I just thought that five years was kind of a really nice balance and giving me that security of knowing what I would pay for a good period of time. But also the early repayment charge wasn't so high at three years on a five-year a five -year deal versus a 10-year deal. So therefore, it wouldn't be obstructive to making changes that I might need to make to my life, kind of, you know, if life changes. Hopefully that makes sense as well. When it comes to the term length, this is something that I thought about and somewhat agonized over for a really long time. Um, a large part of me really didn't want to have a mortgage that was longer than the standard 25 years. Like I can still remember when it was almost impossible to get a, a mortgage longer than 25 years. Um, I, think, I think you can get like 40 year mortgages now, like really long mortgages. Anyway, I digress. Um, but there was a reason that I decided on that slightly longer term. So just for context, in my previous rental, I was very lucky in that I did not have a rent increase for many, many years. So obviously I was really comfortable with that level of expenditure. I was also fine with that level of expenditure through a period of time where my salary was lower. So I as I say, I was really kind of comfortable with that level of money going out and I knew that I'd be able to manage that amount kind of no matter what happened, if that makes sense. On paper, I could have afforded to pay a larger mortgage payment each month than what I had been previously paying in rent because obviously when renting, I was able to save. But there is a big difference between doing your sums on paper and actually living it. Uh, because when we do the sums, we kind of forget all those little expenses. And as I mentioned, I went through a period of time a couple of years ago where I was on a slightly lower salary. And I wouldn't say I struggled because I didn't, but it was definitely harder to save. So I just kind of felt comfortable with that lower amount. Also, you know, if you ever find yourself in a position where you are unemployed, obviously it is far easier to kind of get together a smaller amount of money than a larger amount of money. So that's the reason that I kind of went for that longer term, really. It was just to bring the monthly payments down to very similar to what I'd been paying. And it brought them down to just £50 a month more than what I'd been paying in rent for several years. Another factor here was that I'd done my sums many times and I realized that if you regularly overpay on your mortgage kind of up to what the larger sum would have been if you took a shorter term, if that makes sense, then overall it really doesn't make that much difference to the amount that you pay in interest uh, along the term. But the benefit there is that you have the option to overpay. You're not committed to that larger amount each month. And I know my brother, he took a shorter mortgage term. I think he took out 20 years when he took out his mortgage. And uh, that was a, obviously a higher payment each month so that he could get the mortgage paid off quicker. And whilst it's worked out fine for him, he will even say himself um, that with hindsight, it might have been better to kind of have the longer term and have the option to overpay because when he was doing renovations and things, like he would have benefited from having that extra kind of cash flow at the time. Okay, so overpayments. Having this option in a mortgage was really important to me. Now, in the UK, most providers allow you to overpay by 10% each year without incurring an early repayment charge. Now, what you can pay depends from provider to provider. So some allow you to pay 10% of the outstanding balance at the beginning of each year. My provider allows me to pay 10% of the original balance each year, which obviously is a greater allowance. Now, some financial advisors don't always recommend overpaying your mortgage, especially as interest rates are currently so low, i.e. it's cheap money and therefore you could divert some of the funds that you would use to overpay your mortgage into investments that might offer a higher return. But personally, I think this comes down to your circumstances, your values, your comfort with levels of risk, etc. So, you know, pretty much it's personal finance and therefore your decisions will be personal to you. And of course, paying off your mortgage early, kind of reducing the amount of interest you'll pay over the term certainly has its benefits as well. Personally, I'd always plan to overpay my mortgage where I could for some of the reasons that I've already mentioned. And I'm absolutely thrilled that I've already managed to shave two years off the term of the mortgage by making some overpayments. And I do intend to make some more overpayments as time goes on, but with with levels of high inflation at the moment, then I, I might not be so aggressive as I have been up to press with overpaying. 
um, I might kind of want to use my money in different ways, but we'll see how things pan out. One other thing I liked was that any overpayments I make actually go into an overpayment reserve, which I can use to kind of borrow back from or kind of take a uh, mortgage holiday if I ever fell on hard times. So I really kind of liked that option as well. Then lastly, we have the product fee of £999. Now, I know a lot of people kind of specifically look for mortgage products that don't have a mortgage product fee or a mortgage arrangement fee but they're definitely worth looking at or considering because quite often they come with a lower interest rate which is exactly why I chose the product I did. Now I did kind of use a bit of a I don't know a loophole I suppose you could call it with the provider I chose, if you pay, if you chose a product with a mortgage arrangement fee or a mortgage product fee, they're the same thing really, but different providers call them different things. If you paid that fee upfront and anything happened to the purchase of your property, i.e. it fell through, then you didn't get that money back. But if you added it onto your mortgage, essentially borrowing an additional £999, if the sale fell through um, for any reason, then you didn't have to pay that fee. Now, of course, you don't, you also don't want to be paying additional interest on £999. So what I did is I kept that money back in my account, kind of ring fenced, if you will, for the product fee. And then as soon as I possibly could, as soon as the mortgage was set up, I then overpaid my mortgage by £999, like within the first two days of the mortgage being <laughs> available. And because I'd done it so quickly, it really didn't have much time to accrue any interest. So that's kind of how I got around that fee. Anyway, I think that's all I can share today. Hopefully this was helpful, especially to anyone who is thinking of purchasing a house right now, looking at all the different mortgage products. Hopefully some of the things I talked about kind of maybe gave you food for thought or made you um, kind of think about some of the decisions you're making. Hopefully, as I say, it was helpful. As always, if you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer them in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for supporting my channel and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye now.